Hi, in this video I'm looking at this question here where a particle is moving in a straight line such that its velocity is given by this equation here. So we've got velocity as a function of position is 1 over x plus 2. It's position plus 2. We're also told that x is always greater than negative 2 and when time equals 0, x equals 0. And we're after the position as a function of time and then finding when the position is two and a half seconds and how far the particle has traveled in those first two and a half seconds. So if we've got our velocity as a function of position and we want position as a function of time, we have to use differential calculus. And the reason being, if I write out our equation, we know that velocity equals one over x plus two. Now we also know that velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So I know that dx dt is 1 over x plus 2. So, so if I was going to use this as my differential equation, I would end up with x equals the integral of 1 over x plus 2 dt. But the problem with that is I've got a function of position, not a function of time. I do not have this a function of time, so I can't do that. I have to instead flip this over so that I get dt dx equals flip over that fraction, we just get x plus 2, and that gives me a function of for time is the integral of x plus 2 dx. So now I know that my time is given to me as this function of position. So now if we actually integrate that, t will be x squared divided by 2 plus 2x plus c. Let's deal with this constant. We're told that when t equals 0, x equals 0. So t equals 0 when x equals 0, or vice versa. So I can put 0 in, and x squared over 2 is becomes 0 squared over 2, 2 times 0, plus c. So that gives us c equals 0. So our final equation just stays as x squared over 2 plus 2x. But this is time as a function of position. We want position as a function of time. So I've got to rearrange this to give me my function as x equals a function of time. So let's do that down here. So I want to rearrange to get x as a function of time. That's what I need to do. So let's take our function up here, t equals x squared over 2 plus 2x, and start thinking about this. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this fraction. I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that fraction. That gives me 2t equals x squared plus 4x. So now I need to get this into a form where I can rearrange it so I've just got x equals function of time. So I need to only have one x on this side. So to do that I'm thinking of using a perfect square because I can halve 4 nicely. So if I get 2t my perfect square would be x plus half of 4 is 2 squared and now I just need to deal with the fact that if I open this back out I'd end up with a constant down the end which we don't have up here. So I do this number here squared which is 4, and I take that away. So that's our perfect square. So now I can get rid of this minus 4 by adding 4 to both sides, and that gives us 2t plus 4 equals x plus 2 all squared. I can get rid of this squared by taking the square root of both sides. Remembering, of course, I've got to take plus or minus. So that gives us x plus 2 equals the plus or minus square root 
of 2t plus 4. And lastly, I can subtract 2 off of both sides and give us x equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2t plus 4. Now, I can check whether I can keep my plus or minus or whether I can get rid of one of those options. We're told that x must always be greater than negative 2. So if I go back to my equation here and I look at this, I've got negative 2 plus or minus some stuff. So if I have negative 2 plus stuff, then I will stay greater than negative 2. So that's all good. But if I do negative 2 minus stuff, then I'm going to get less than negative 2, which is no good. So we only take the positive version. We're just going to have x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 2t plus 4. Fix up that 4. Plus 4 as x is always greater than negative 2. And now we have position as a function of time. Now we can answer the other two parts. Part B, the position after two and a half seconds. Well, that's nice and easy. Part B, being the position after two and a half seconds, well, we're trying to find x of 2.5. So we're just going to have negative 2 plus the square root of 2 times 2.5 plus 4, which gives us negative 2 plus the square root of 2 times 2.5 is 5, plus 4 is 9. And so we're going to have equals negative 2 plus the square root of 9 is 3. And so x of 2.5, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So now we know our position after 2.5 seconds. Lastly, part C, we want the distance travelled in the first two and a half seconds. Now that is slightly different to position because we need to make sure that our particle hasn't changed direction. Because if my particle is saying heading this way and then changes direction and then changes direction again and heads off that way, then it's travelled this distance plus this distance plus this distance. So... I've got to make sure that our position never changes. Now, if we actually go back to our velocity equation, if I look at my velocity and I think that, well, my x is always greater than negative 2, that means that velocity is always going to be positive. My velocity will start at just a little bit over 1 over negative 2 and a bit plus 2. And always increase from there as x increases. So my velocity is always going to be positive, which means that it is never slowed down and changed direction, never slowed down and changed direction. So my position is also positive. So therefore our distance can just simply be the difference between x at 2.5 and x at 0. So let's start filling this in. We know that x at 2.5 is 1, and we get just minus of x of 0. Well, that's negative 2 plus the square root of 2 times 0 plus 4. So that's going to give us 1 minus of negative 2 plus... That's just 0, so we have 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. So we have... 1 minus negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So our distance travelled is 1 centimetre in the first 2.5 seconds. So there we go. If we have velocity as a function of position, we can convert that into a differential equation of dt dx equals a function of position. Integrate that and get a time as a function of position. And then rearranging that gives us position as a function of time. And then from there we can go off and use that equation to do other things.